Hello, my name is Chris Kurzik and I'm the Principal Engineer at Athabasca Engineering Solutions, AES for short. And uh, what does AES do? Well, first of all, we provide third-party value evaluations. We provide training and certification. We provide equipment re-rating. Come back, we're going to dive in today, Fitness for Service, API 579.1. Particularly, we're going to look at uh, Part 5, Local Metal Loss. This is the first video in the series I, I hope to do with your support. And uh, this is episode number one. And in particular, we're going to talk primarily about the third edition, which is the latest one at the time making of this video, 2016, but I, I primarily am a 2007 expert. What I found in, is that there's not much, there's really no difference in um, between that and this with the material covered in this video. So let's continue. So we're going to talk today about general notes that's found at the beginning of the chapter. Talk about the types of flaws going to talk about the applications and limitations, which is really important and uh, uh, important to review that because, um, you know, there there is some really important points that you need to really understand before you do a proper analysis. And the third is is the inspection requirements. What what does the inspector require? Uh, re what's required of the inspector or yourself to, pr to properly set the uh, get the right information so that you can do the work properly. Look at general 5.1. So the goal of this evaluation is to evaluate pressurized components, so tanks, pressure vessels that are subject to local metal loss. So it's not applicable to, you know, like a structural component. It's for pressurized parts. Okay. It says that you know the damage can result from you know corrosion or erosion. It can result from mechanical damage. It can result from you know blend grinding. So we want to evaluate the components that are subject to these these type of conditions, and you know to to determine you know the level of inspection. So essentially, we have two types of flaws that are classified in part five. First of all, we have something called a local thin area, which is called an LTA, and then that's used quite heavily. So we're gonna use that nomenclature for now on. So that approximately, by definition, broad definition, that's where the flaw length is approximately equal to the flaw width, approximately. It doesn't have to be exact. And the second one is called a groove-like flaw where we have a sharp radius at the base of the flaw. Now there's some some thoughts for us because this is a little bit more interesting because there's some overlap with other types of flaws with, with groove-like flaws. So in the, in the case of erosion and corrosion, we have a flaw length um, which is much larger than the width. And so they have a very local thin area that we have to evaluate. And the second case is like, you know, dents and flaws that are, have been mechanically removed. And so in this, in this case, the flaw length is much, you know, greater than, than that. And so um, we have to worry about when we do mechanical removal, removal of flaws that we don't cold work the part. Also, uh, gouges are frequently associated with dents. Uh, you know, it's easy to do because when you look at it, you're not sure. Um, and if that's the if, but if it is a gouge, then we should be actually looking at part 12 should be used. And this is, um, you know, part of the experience that you, as you get more and more experience, you'll have to figure out how to differentiate, how to evaluate that flaw. A few more points here about applicability limitations. Um, you can apply this evaluation for the inside and outside of a part. So if you have a pressure vessel, you can look at the inside and the outside. And one of the things is that it's very, very common to have concurrent damage. That's why when we do um, all of our examples, we look at table 2.1 
and uh, we look at we try to identify all the different types of concurrent damage so so typically you know when we see this kind of local metal loss the 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 code api 579 warns us that there could be more okay and typically what you'll find is you'll you'll get you'll see general metal loss so you'll you'll have to concurrently evaluate that and then you'll have to look at pitting which is very common and uh you know part seven hydrogen damage is is also something to keep your eye out for look at a little bit deeper into level one and two assessment it, it's applicable if the design code is listed in part one if we call from our earlier videos api 579 typically is is applicable only if it's designed to a recognizable code and if that case then we have to you know look at doing more deeper assessments now there has to be you know sufficient material loss or toughness in the part and and that's in part three which is you know the mdmt the minimum design temperature evaluation to make sure that you're not going to have you know brittle fracture cases and in uh, this case also where, where you have no cyclical service so you know they're concerned about you know this local creating a, a stress riser where it could create a crack So it's about level one and then two assessments. Basically, the next step is level one type A components. I did an earlier video about type A, B, and C type components. And um, so level one comp uh, type A components are applicable to, to level one, you know, generally. And this is a reminder, this is where you have internal pressure you have pressurized part but there's negligible supplemental loads so like bending and so on and again uh, look at the previous videos on the type of the part uh, component types the second part is level 2a or b uh, you would you can use a level 2 assessment for a or b type parts and this is where you have a combination of internal external pressure and uh, supplemental loads now we also have special geometry requirements for for the groove a few thoughts about the level three assessment which is the most detailed assessment and uh, we talk about you know if level one and level two does not apply then go to level three and this is what um, we, we, we was mentioned in earlier videos about the different levels of assessments and um, and basically you know it it, uh, it applies to a or B or C uh, type of components that are subject to internal and external pressure and supplemental loads also uh, you know designs that are based upon a proof test so we've you know for example uh, anything designed to ask me be 169 like piping tees and reducers um, those are examples where you know you need to do a level three another one is if you have a fatigue service issue and they have some thoughts here about that so they, they say in particular components to cyclic service are components where you have a fatigue analysis which was performed as part of the original calculation so if it was originally done then, it, then really you should be doing a, a level three and, uh, and and basically that's all it has to say about that one now if we continue talk about metal loss in the knuckle region of uh, vessel heads and transitions and um, this refers to you know um, metal loss in the knuckle region of elliptical heads in particular outside the 0.8 d region uh, and in spherical and toroconical heads and in conical transitions uh, we have some pressure vessel videos if you want to see some more information about the you know design of these type of components so to get a better understanding
back and reminds us that, you know, if the evaluation shows that, you know, this component is not acceptable because of this, we have a few options, right? We can re-rate the part uh, at a low, you know, a different coincidental pressure and temperature. And for tank shells, we can re-rate uh, that, but based upon the, you know, the MFH, also have some reminders about the limitations based upon temperature and basically their comment is if the materials are operating in the creep range C part 10 and there's some tables built within API 579 that you can find for the for given materials and it will it will let you know when you have to uh, go deeper and consider this uh, this creep type of assessment. It also reminds us that we can use this for applications where we have blend ground areas and uh, to do the assessment. And this is uh, applicable to crack-like flaws, maybe small cracks on the surface that we want to remove. So let's move on to 5.3 data requirements. So we have the original equipment design data, that's C part two, we need all that information to do an assessment, just like the other sections. Uh, we need to get that maintenance history and operation history so we, we understand where we came and where we're going. And we need the required data and measurements for the FFS assessments, which we'll, we'll talk about shortly. Let's look at the data assessment. So usually if we have like a low, uh, an LTA, right? So then we, we acquire the data and measurements for an FFS assessment. We require thickness profiles to determine, you know, where, where exactly it is. And we use, in this case, we're using a grid system. And then we create something called a critical thickness profile called a CTP. And then we get their minimum thickness or require data measurements for flaws, local flaws, then we're looking at, we need to get uh, dimensions like S and C as shown there. And so that we can determine the subject area for inspection, where you, you, uh, we can see down here, let me show you this right here. So we've got, we, we create the area of inspection and this is how we base, you know, the extent of uh, the extent of the inspection to determine the flaw size. A few other other dimensions here. We we need to get like TEM, this this radius here, the width, and all this should be in the report, and it should be shown like a cross section type of issue, it's because remember, our length is much longer than than our width. And so, you know, we need to know the, you know, the length of the crack and then also um, the angles, which is, you know, quite hard to do, but it's part of doing that assessment so we can determine, you know, where it's oriented on our stress field for our part. We need, you know, for the data requirements for level one and two assessments and, and the requirements are very similar for one and two. And uh, we're looking at, you know, flaw to major structural dot, uh, discontinuity type spacing. We have to look at, you know, the geometry, vessel geometry, you know, how it's shaped on there so we can, you know, have a look at that. We have to look at the material properties data as well when we do that. And, and material dot property data gets more and more, um, you know, when we go into level three, then we need to have more uh, materials property data. data. So look, look quickly at uh, level three assessment. So this involves, you need to do a numerical uh, evaluation, FEA, and you have to, you know, look at the load limits and develop sort of a procedure in order to do the assessment. And we have to establish in more detail the operating and design conditions. 
and uh, we have to have you know a description of the local metal loss including size and thickness profiles and we need to have you know a, a very more complete you know materials property data in order to complete the analysis so that basically concludes this uh, this part here of this section I hope that you found this presentation useful and valuable to you. This was provided by Athabasca Engineering Solutions. We'd love to hear your feedback and, and your thoughts on further videos. And we'd love to hear from you. Maybe we can do some business. Please subscribe to our channel so you don't miss a thing. Take care for now. 